Hello, you're watching What Culture Gaming right now with me, Peter from What Culture Gaming. And me, Ben from What Culture Gaming. Have we established what you're watching yet? What Culture Gaming. What Culture Gaming. And here we talk about games. Ben's been playing a game, uh, a new game that's not new at all, but it's brand new and it's just come out. 2011. 2011. Yeah. You've been playing Skyrim VR. Skyrim VR. Yeah. Peter, I'm not going to lie, I had the worst time oh, with God. Skyrim VR. And, and I don't know if it's entirely my fault. And I have a feeling it might be. So I'm going to... I'm going to explain every detail of all of the issues I had last night but then I will round it back to actually just talking about the game itself unbiased from the technical issues that I experienced right because I don't know if it, I think it might have just been me that's had these problems but they're the kind of problems that were compounded by the game not really being too suited to being in Probably VR very anywhere helpful in, yeah in that respect um, hmm. so let's start things off I loaded up the game. Um, I've got. I'm sat on the sofa because no one's going to play this game stood up. I'm sat on the sofa. You can play with the move controllers, mm. uh, but if you use that, you have to teleport rather than actually walk. You have to just pick a spot and go. I'm going to teleport to here. And do really? That. So no one's going to do that. So I was playing with the Dual Shock, right? Right. Uh, and hell. And I I loaded it up. The main menu for some reason was here. So I was like. What? So I'm sat on the sofa. I'm having to, I'm having to look at the menu there by your French doors. And I'm, by my French doors, yeah, that open out onto the veranda. Mm. Is that a thing? What's a veranda? Uh, Sounds like something that. Yeah, I mean, be, you've got like a, a nice two-inch balcony out of those doors, haven't you? Yeah, 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 a little bit. I mean, you yeah. could fall you if you're yeah. really thin. Yeah. Anyway, so the menu's here. And, and I'm having real problems with it because I've got lo loads of wires yeah. coming out the back of my head. It is like, it's like being a Borg or something, like, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm looking over here now to see the menu. Um, I click on it and I start the game and immediately it's a bit wonky. Because You're on I'm, the horse. I'm, on, I'm, like, I'm in the cart, I look down and I'm about a few feet away from where I should be sitting. And I can't hear anyone. I'm, I'm looking at them and they're so quiet. So I go into the settings, I put voice all the way up to max, lower everything else down, I keep the master volume up, mm. lower everything else down and then turn up the volume overall so I can hear them. And it's still really quiet. Hey, I, horse I'm, thief. And I, I can't work it out. Yeah. I can't work out what's going on. Then I turn my, my head around, because at this point I had the default controls for turning on DualShock are sort of the ones that a lot of people have experienced where it snaps. Oh, right, yeah. To, to, like like that. in you Resident Evil. You can change Evil. it to smooth, yeah. which I then did change it to eventually. Right. But I was I was rotating on the spot, and and when I was practically facing the wrong way, it was really loud. I could hear what they were saying. And then when I faced them, they were going... And I turned around, what are you here for? And Watch your tongue. So that's King Ulfric's Stormcloak. That's Ulfric's Stormcloak. <laughs> so, yeah, immediately I was a little bit put off by that. And then I was trying to sort of lean down to, to look past people at what was going on. But the, the headset was sort of going a bit mental and not really understanding what I was trying to do. Right. All this stuff can be attributed to the headset at this point. Yeah. Um... So then I, I finally get into actually playing. Right, so the horse didn't shoot off into the, the sky. The horse didn't just like, like take it off. Used to. No, no glitches. Okay. No, it's just, just VR. You've had a lot of time to fix these things. Exactly. Yeah. These, these issues are, are well and truly sorted. Right. So then you get into the game. The compass, you know, that's normally at the top of the screen that shows map markers yes. and you know, enemies and that sort of stuff, it's, it's sort of at your waist. So you have to look down to see it. Right. And when I looked down to see it, it, it was here on my left. I was like, what's it doing down there? I don't understand. Why is it doing that? But only when you look down. So it was here, and then you look, and then it went there. No, no, no. Is it? Oh. I looked down, and I could see it out the corner of my eyes. And every time, and then I was trying to recenter it, which you do in VR by holding the options mm. button, and the screen would move slightly, so it'd be like, okay, that's recentered. Yeah. But the menu was still like all the stuff was on my left. So then I'd open the menu, and it would be here, and I'd have to go. <sighs> Why am I looking over here for the menu, creating the character? All the stuff was like really? practically behind me at this point. Yeah. I was like, for God's sake, why is this happening? I don't understand. Oh. And, and these are the issues where I think, while they can sort of be explained 
by just the headset messing up. Mm. The game also has to take some blame here. Oh yeah. Because other games have managed it pretty well. Because other games have managed it fine. This is a this is a setup with my VR that I've used countless times where I've I just pull it, it out from yours, under yeah. my TV and just use it. Mm -hmm. So there should be no issues. I then quit the game, reset up my VR headset, turned on loads of lights, um, changed the camera position on top of the TV so it was pointing directly at me. Mm. Uh, and then I, I started it up again and I was like, oh, wow, the main menu's in front of me now. Nice. That's a good start. Yes. That's a good start. And then everything slowly, like not, not in real time, I couldn't see it happening, but slowly but surely, everything was drifting sort of anti-clockwise around me. To all, the left. To the left, to the left. All the HUD in, in the box. Everything the, you need. In a box to the left. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's clearly a, a problem. <clears throat> I'm getting choked up. Uh, it, I was so uh, frustrated last night. I was really mad because I really wanted to play it and enjoy it. Yeah. So while I can explain some of these issues away with just the headset being, you know, oh, it's just technology messing up. Yeah. The fact that when I was trying every other game I've played, when I've needed to recenter the, the game, I pressed the options button yeah. and everything snapped back to the front. Mm -hmm. The menu was still, you know, around me at various points. And I'm going to get into it more in a bit. But at some point it was behind me. Right. And when I'd load into new sections, it would face me in the direction that it thought was forwards. So I'd load in um, to, the to the open world area for the first time. And I'd be looking at the cave and the view would be behind me. So like, what is going on? And the sound as well. The fact that it can't tell that I am looking at the camera, it's it can see all the lights on the headset, it knows I'm looking forward, right. and yet it thinks the sound should be here. So only when I'm facing it this way yeah. is it actually loud, but even then, when I face this way, the person's over here, so it doesn't make any sense. So you can't look at a person and hear them at the same time, it's you have to absolutely choose. baffling, it was so frustrating, and, and the in-game, when you start up VR games normally, there's there's a little bit of setup. Yeah. Where you're, where it shows you in person, sat there, and it'll say, can you make sure that the lights mm. are within this box, or you're stood on this square, yeah. or that sort of stuff. There's nothing. The only VR options there are are movement controls. Right. And that's it. So there's no there's, room where you have to look at targets or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, there's, there's no setup or anything. But this, once I got moving around, it was like it was fine. Right. You know, I was. You hold you hold the 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 weapon. It's sort of floating here, mm. and there's a little reticule in the middle of the screen where you look around and the, the reticule moves too, and that's fine. It's just whenever you talk to Someone, all the dialogue options are here, so you can't see them. They're standing there. Yeah, right. But very, but it reached a point uh, about halfway through my time with it because I played it for a few hours. The 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 HUD had made its way all the way around me and come back. But this is the thing: it's a really you can't watch it. It's not just moving. No. Like you you'll look to the left and it'll just take the initiative to nudge a little bit further away from you to right. the point where actually it just made it way. I was like, I'm I'm enjoying myself, but I'm not going to get used to it because it's going to disappear again in yeah. a minute and I'm going to lose it again. Um, so yeah. That was really annoying. I'm just going through all the notes because I made loads of notes here. Um, towards the end of my time with it last night, my weapon was just right in the middle of the camera, yeah. so I couldn't see past it. Um, just walking around like this. Yeah. The Dragonborn. <laughs> I am the Dragonborn. <laughs> exactly. Fusro da. Um, so yeah, there's that. Right. And also going back to the the bit at the start when I'm in the carriage and I'm trying to look down, but it's not really. Well, you know, it doesn't really understand. Yeah, that. and Actually, you're sat slightly to the right because it. Yeah, but I'm I'm sat off center for for a start for some reason. Yeah, um, and then when I peer around, it doesn't really peer peer around at all. I think it's because it thinks I'm facing this way when actually I'm sat this way. Mm. So then when I'm peering around, it doesn't really understand the orientation I'm trying to do. Yeah. So it just sort of bobs down. At no point was I able to properly like peer down oh, and around. That's stuff part of the whole thing, isn't it's it? It's part of the immersion. Yeah. And and that was that was really lost, which was really annoying. I'll read what I put here. Um, with all these issues, the opening section was a nightmare. Yeah. There was there was no walking between the various bits of dialogue and, and sort of animation to start things off. It just faded to black and then you were in the next place. Really? And then with everything orientated the wrong way, I couldn't hear anyone, mm -hmm. I couldn't see any of the HUD. Uh, when you get put down on the chopping block, yeah. if the chopping block's here, and the guy's head who's just been chopped off is here, I was facing this way for some reason. I was just looking up at the executioner. So they were going to slice I, your head in two. Exactly. Like down I, I there. looked to my right, and there was the. Th I was like, "What? Which direction am I facing? I don't understand. This doesn't make sense." You're How? supposed to see the dragon over the shoulder of the executioner, and, and you I were probably think... looking like over there. Somewhere. Exactly. I could see the dragon. I was looking right up at him. <laughs> I was like, "This shouldn't be right." Right. This. 
there, there are limits to what is the headset's problem and what is the game's problem. Oh, yeah, problem. yeah. I think fundamentally, I haven't seen anyone else with these issues. So again, mm. this may all just be me, but, but you've been this fine game before. is clearly... I've been fine before, and this game is clearly just not well-tuned mm. for, for virtual reality. Yeah. Um, moving on. You, you use the right stick to turn, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I was still getting used to uh, not having to press up and down to look up and down. Just use your head instead. Oh, yeah. Fun fact, when you press up on the right stick, it snaps you facing the way it thinks is forwards. So every so often I'd be walking up some stairs and I'd, I'd press up to look up instinctively and I'd go whoop and just face exactly the way I'd come from. Sake. And that just completely disorientated me, oh. uh, which was annoying. However, moving on, yeah, there's a great sense of scale. When you're walking around in VR, I know it's that you, you're barely containing laughter, Peter, but there are good things. Right. Right, because I don't want to just slam this game because I really wanted to try it. To I love honest, Skyrim. Yeah. I like virtual reality. I bought a headset, for God's sake. You when you said yesterday that you were going to go home and play it, I thought, oh, I'm actually a bit jealous. A bit like, jealous. Swinging the sword. Do you swing the sword with the motion in the controller? Or? With, uh, no. Uh, no, you just use the normal. If you had the, the move control, you would have done. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if you had I the mean, move controller. that sounds interesting. And, you know, the Skyrim world is pretty cool. I do prefer the Oblivion world because because I'm not yeah. one for snow. Yeah, uh, I, I love Oblivion. It looks like you'd just be wandering around quite depressed and cold if you were really there mm -hmm. in, in Skyrim. But, um, you know, it's still very beautiful, well-made, alive, mm -hmm. you know, all those random encounters. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm willing to hear some good stuff. But Okay, so this this is actually, I know we've been talking for a bit now, but I needed to get that stuff off my yeah, chest because I'd be remiss in my duty of reviewing this game Absolutely. in any capacity if I didn't mention the horror show that mm -hmm. I had actually playing the game. So, putting all that stuff to one side, if we can, uh, as much as I think that it is partly a headset problem, but also very much a game problem too. Yeah. Um, this is now me talking about the game itself. The game. So there's a great sense of scale okay. when arriving in locations like the uh, like the, the White Run Hold. Yeah. Where Jarl Balgruf is, and mm -hmm. you're walking around and you're looking up, and there's it's massive and the huge beams and stuff yeah. like that. It's really impressive. Mm -hmm. It's 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 great. I mean, it's not so great when you you know you spawn in and you're facing the door, yeah. and you have to turn around and go, oh here I am, oh wow this is amazing. And then you try and uh, look up at the beams and you look at the door again because you yeah you press up on forwards this. and then you turn around. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, this I mean it's it's Skyrim again. Yeah. It's practically unchanged. Right. Um, you just load it. It's the main menu. It's very clear that, and I don't want to dismiss uh, Bethesda's efforts because I'm sure some people work very hard on, oh, yeah. on putting this into VR. But it does just feel like, hey, it's Skyrim, but in, but VR, in VR, and not very well implemented mm. at that. Um, so you, you frequently miss key things, uh, like in the intro section, because everyone's so quiet, yeah. you can't really hear what they're saying. And the HUD is is it's down at your waist anyway. So ignoring the problems that I had, if it's behind you, yeah, it's down here. So you're not really looking down at all. Mm. You you might hear someone say, "Help! I need help!" And you you're like, "Oh God! I've got to look down to find oh, out where the quest where is." Now, yeah. And then you're looking round all over the place, and the sound design is all wonky mm. because it's louder that way, but you're not facing it's that like way. It's like overly stereoscopic. Exactly, right? and the, the sound is quite tinny as well. Yeah. It's, it, they've really not done. I must say, they've done a very bad job of of putting the sound into a 3D environment. Right. It's not very good, which is frustrating. Um, the loading screens are just flat pictures. Oh, so, really? So you know there's when nice you when you view. Yeah, there's Rotating 3D things. models which you can just rotate with a thumbstick, but it's 2D oh, spinning in what? place. Uh, the main menu as well, it's just, it, much like when you put on the VR headset when you're on the PS4 menu, it's just a screen in front mm. of you that you you look around and the right. screen stays in place. It's it's that. How good would that have been though for a loading, like I quite liked the loading screens in Skyrim, just looking at an object. Yeah. Just, but it would be even better if you have like, you know, the dragon and you could just like, you know, spin it round, have a look at it. Yeah, the but, menus are flat screens as well. Okay. Um, which which frequently can be penetrated by objects and people. So although the menu screens were largely over here for some reason, mm. sometimes I'd press circle to open my menu and it would open up and there'd just be a character model just halfway <laughs> through it. Like, this is rubbish. How but does that how, happen? That's really annoying. That's really annoying. Um, so yeah, there's, there's an immense amount of texture popping. Oh, so, the... because the render distance probably isn't that great, yeah. you're 
I'm not talking about textures just popping in on objects Never when you're do. right next to them, but like you'll be walking up a hill, for example, and 20 yards ahead of you, like some kind of god, foliage is spawning in as you walk towards mm. it, just 20 yards away consistently, like bushes and things will like pop Like a draw in. distance kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that sort of stuff, which is annoying. But above all, this is a six-year-old game now that wasn't particularly handsome at the time. Yeah. And although the headset is notoriously a bit blurry mm -hmm. when you're looking at stuff close up, um, it really does just highlight the naffness of the character animations. Oh, yeah. So right at the start, for example, when the guy takes out his pen and quill, he'll he'll put it away, but it'll just like disappear from his hands, and then he'll go. And then he'll start walking off. Like it just right. it looks rubbish yeah. in first person. The the character models themselves, the faces have been always been quite horrific in Skyrim. Yeah. Um, and the combat system is even worse. Because the combat system has always been bad in Elder Scrolls games. Mm. And now, as much as you always were, just going, ah Shield bash, shield bash, now, swing. Now you're doing it in first person, so you're just sort of like looking all over the place and yeah. just swinging and you've got your your health is behind you and you do <laughs> it's just it's just not suited for for virtual reality, yeah. at least the way that they've implemented it. It would need a total redesign. It's a shame. It sounds to me like, you know, they've done not necessarily the best they could with what they had, but they've 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 done what they could. Yes. And the reason it's not good is not necessarily through the through the fault of the, you know, the transferring it to VR mode, if you mm -hmm. like. But it's the fact that it never should have been chosen in the first place as a candidate for it, right? Right. Someone said, make that a VR game, that game that, you know, is not suited to be a VR game. And they've just done what they can to... Yeah. They've, yeah. they've, they've literally done Haunt the best it. that they can with yeah. it. And I'm going to get on to my, my final remarks in a bit where I talk about really its candidacy for, for being in virtual reality is right. ridiculous. Mm. Um, major landmarks like, you know, the big mountain... Yeah, with the, with the shouty wizards at the top. Yeah, something whatever. something horn I think it's um, called. Or, or it's just shrouded in fog. You can't see oh, it. Sick. It's just it's just fog everywhere. It's like proper PS2 stuff. Right. Um, I honestly think the uh, pr probably the, the Switch version is is far better than this in terms right. of uh, being able to you know show off the game. That has motion controls, doesn't it? In the uh, yeah, I think it does. Yeah, with the Joy Cons. Yeah. yeah. Um, and large, uh, lastly, the, the headset is just it's just not clear enough to read a lot of the HUD and the and the, the item descriptions and things just because it's it's just it's just not suited for it. Yeah. Um, moving on to some facts for you. Yeah, hot and fresh. It's forty nine ninety nine. Is it? It's forty nine ninety nine. Uh, it's available now. It does contain all the DLCs, but uh, that ties into the fact that this game should never have been in virtual reality because people do not want to wear a headset for more than two to three hours no. at a time. You just don't want to do it. And this game, as ridiculous as it sounds, it doesn't have a non-VR mode to it. You can only play it in VR. It's not like, which is what they should have done if possible, and I don't want to undermine the efforts again that they've gone to to make it happen because this might not have been possible given their really wonky engine. Mm. Um, but it's, it's not like they... It's just an, a paid add-on for the Skyrim remaster, right. which is what they should have done. Mm. Where you can write, okay, I've had enough of that in VR, now I'm going to switch back to normal. Yeah, You've got to play this whole game in VR. Nobody is going to finish this in VR. No. No one's going to do it. God, Small experiences, a whole Elder Scrolls game in VR. It's, it's exhausting. Even the amount of time, you know, technical limitations and all that I had, I could not see myself playing this 100-hour game in virtual reality. That is not... People heard this announced and went, oh my god, that's amazing. I want to put Skyrim in VR. Mm. And I saw that and thought, right, okay, firstly, it's Skyrim again. Yeah. Um, and secondly, no, no one's going to want to play this. And now having done it, no, nobody does. PlayStation VR and VR in general is perfect for smaller, tighter narrative yep. experience. Like the Batman Arkham VR game yes. was absolutely perfect. It was the perfect length. It was very linear. But while you can do open worldish games on it, you're gonna have to re-adjust your approach to it. Because if you just port a 2011 game, it's not gonna work very well, and, I, it, and it just doesn't. I really liked that um, that gangster thing in VR Worlds. Um, like yeah, the... they're doing a full game of that now. Yeah, they are. Actually, which will yeah. be great because that'll be that? like six hours long. There'll be short missions. There'll be tight yeah. linear narrative. An open world game like Skyrim just doesn't translate. 
Nobody is going to finish this, and it's such a shame because I love the idea of Skyrim in, in, in VR. And if they'd have just released like a, a £15 add on for Skyrim mm. Remastered, and again, I don't know if it would have been possible because their engine is so bad. Yeah, it probably took a lot just to get it working. Just to get it working, yeah. right. But other games do have a VR option mm. that you can just go, boop, oh, yeah. we've detected a VR headset. Would you like to play it in VR for a bit? Mm. Like Resident, Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Yeah, okay, I'll play it in VR for a bit mm -hmm. now. If they'd have done that, it would have made far more sense. But releasing a £50 re-release based purely around VR Which doesn't for over 100 of hours with all the DLC. Well. It, and I had huge technical problems to the extent that I don't think I'm ever going to go back to it. Yeah. Because that's, that's absurd. Mm. Like, that was such a pain in the ass. And even then, when I did start playing it and got into the open world and things, I was like, I'm just, I'm back in Skyrim again. Yeah. I'm back in Skyrim again. If you want to play Skyrim again, get the remastered version. If you want to try it in VR, I don't know what to tell you. It's, for me, it's just, it's simply not worth the money. It's a novelty. Yeah. And the novelty, as much as people call VR a fad and a novelty anyway, Skyrim is just evidence of that. Yeah. And Skyrim VR is a novelty and it wears thin. By the sounds of it, I, I would not pay for it. I would go to your house right. and just have 10 minutes in Skyrim going, oh yeah, this is... Yeah, there's the scale here mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's and just that. a bit blurry. That's the yeah. thing as well. Everything's a bit blurry, which is a headset problem because it's not the most expensive headset in the world. Mm. It just it just doesn't translate. It's just it's just a very poor candidate for VR. But because it's Skyrim, people got excited about it. And well, Bethesda knew they could make money. Can Bethesda not please just make the next Elder Scrolls? I guess they won't because Elder Scrolls Online is just making shed loads of cash. Uh. But they should just make Elder Scrolls Six like. Valenwood or elsewhere or mm. something. There's so many good candidates. Yeah, I'm I'm very tired of Skyrim. I, we've had the Skyrim remaster in the office for a while now, and I, I just I have not brought myself to touch it yet. Yeah, um, is it my but, house? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. yeah, but I I love Skyrim, and and I I love VR, and this just doesn't work, mm. and it and that ignores all of the technical issues that I had. Yeah, it just doesn't work. It's just not it's just not a good idea. Um, I mean, I, I got to admire them for doing it. It is there, it runs, and people can play it for 100 hours if they want, but I don't understand they should have why they would. Invested the time and the expertise. They surely had to hire actual VR people to the, to the project, presumably. Mm -hmm. They should have invested all that time and expertise in making a VR mode in the next Elder Scrolls or Fallout game, or you know, whatever it is they yeah, want to call it, Star, just, Starfield just a, or whatever, spin off or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a in a Resident Evil style way, where you just switch it on and off if you want to. Like they yeah. sh they, sh they should not have churned out the same. It, well, it's because it's money for old rope. That's what it is. Isn't yeah, it? They, they are literally looking to make money off anything they can, and that's not to undermine that Skyrim is a is a great game. Mm. Uh, virtual reality is a great platform. Yeah, but this just doesn't work. Yeah, it just doesn't work. And, and again, I keep saying it, but I really want as much as I talk for ten minutes about all the ridiculous issues I had. I appreciate that those may have been exclusive to me. Yeah, but ignoring all of those problems and looking at how virtual reality just works mm. with Skyrim, no one's going to play it for 100 hours. No. No one is going to play it for 100 hours. Anyway, so that is Skyrim VR. Yeah. Um, sadly, very underwhelmed. Mm. Um, I'm going to give it two and a half stars. Yeah. Because it's Skyrim for a start. So, I mean, how many marks can you give that? Because it's the same game yeah. six years later. And then virtual reality just adds nothing. It detracts from the experience. A, a it, it detracts from an already tired experience mm -hmm. that we've all played. Yeah, it is. Yeah, even before it came out, mm -hmm. it was it was a, a tired old game. But it gets a couple of stars for looking kind of nice when it's not blurry. Yeah, and, uh, it's yeah, it's it's like it's, it's always nice to be it's in an a, a world. For effort. It's, yeah, it's right. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's it works. It yeah. works. There's some immersion. But it just it's not a good VR game. Yeah, is, is the problem. Stick with us for uh, plenty of video game reviews coming to you. It's November, is it? It's just been November, the month of vi video games being chucked at you. I've been Peter from What Culture, and I've been Ben from what culture with a very fair review right and we'll see you soon see you soon